Good morning, greetings, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well-being, and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body, you are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That is why we are here every day in The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 31 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle. But what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is always a healing system. It's always a regenerating system. It is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment -moment basis. And while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health, nutrition, prescription drugs, the longevity products, the longevity business, health, a health challenge you or a loved one may be dealing with, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. We love hearing from you, 844-236-6010 is our number. If you have a success story you'd like to share, if you want to contribute to the conversation, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised or recommended on the bright side, go to brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. Purchase longevity products right off the website. You can also call... The phone team at 866-735-2470, 866-735-2470. They can give you the full scoop on all the longevity products. If you want to sign up to join the Brightside Ben team, you can do that as well. Call 866-735-2470 for a one-time $25 fee. You can start a longevity business, get your products at the wholesale price, enjoy the tax benefits associated with having your own business, writing off your home office, making your own hours, working as little or as, or as much as you so desire, making as little or as much money as you so desire. There's folks making some really serious money with longevity. There's other people making a couple hundred bucks a month. Call, uh, call 866-735-2470 for more info or sign up right off our websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. And don't forget to check out our Truth Treatment products, Truth Transdermal C Serum, Truth Transdermal C Balm, Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream, and our Truth biomimetic priming mist are all up at truthtreatments.com. If you're dealing with aging skin or want to prevent aging skin, you want to build up that connective tissue, you need, you need vitamin C and you need vitamin A and you need lots of it. And that's why I developed my truth treatment products. They're not ordinary products, they're treatments. They need to be used accordingly. I would have to be crazy to get into the skincare business and make a skincare line with all the zillions of skincare lines out there, all the noise and baloney that's out there in the world of skin. Truth treatments are medicine-like topicals. They're not medicines, but they're medicine-like topicals. They're therapeutic topicals for driving the production of connective tissue. What I discovered in my compounding pharmacy was that when you heal the skin from burns or from cuts or from scrapes, you get everything you want in a skincare product. You get, uh, when you heal the skin topically, you get moisture skin, you get more hydrated skin, you get stronger skin, you get skin with a more even tone, you get anti-aging skin. Anti-aging is healing. Healing is anti-aging. And so Truth Treatments, which were born in my compounding pharmacy for healing the skin, are the perfect ideal topicals for anti-aging the skin. But they're treatments. They're not creams and lotions and potions that you rub on your skin. Check them out at truthtreatments.com. TruthTreatments.com. Okay, welcome back to the bright side. We've been talking membranes, molecules and membranes, or minerals and membranes. Minerals and membranes are what are, are responsible for life. Minerals pass through membranes, and the membranes are structured such that as the minerals pass through, electricity is generated. That's how it happens. That's how the magic happens. The minerals are found in the soil these electrified minerals. There's rocks everywhere. The, the planet is a rock. But these specific minerals that pass through living membranes are 
specifically designed in this incredible way by microbes that live in bacteria that live in the soil that eat the dead plants and turn the dead plants in combination with the sun into living minerals. They turn rocks into living minerals. That's called, those are, that's what plant derived minerals are right there in a nutshell. Plant derived minerals are the minerals that are responsible for all of life. The vitamins work secondary to the minerals. The minerals are what generate the, the electricity. And it's between the minerals and the membranes where you have life. That's where life begins, minerals and membranes. In fact, in the Bible, it says how life began in, in the dirt. Well, from a scientific perspective, life began in clay. And clay has unique, is uniquely structured with lots of membranes. There's a very close relationship between clay and minerals and human beings. In fact, the technical name for clay is humus. So anyway, the uh, membrane that covers the cell, the cell is this blob of living bioelectrical computing responsive intelligence. It's not just a blob. It's a much more than a blob. There's no science fiction in the writer. There's no science fiction writer on the planet that could come up with the concept of a cell or what it is. A living bioelectrical computer that is responsive and intelligent and learns and it learns and it's responsive and it's intelligent every split second. Every split second it's learning. Every split second. And when I say split, I'm talking nano, nano, nano second. It's constantly changing. And it, 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 the membrane is, what, is what's responsible for everything that happens inside the cell. The membrane is made up of fat and cholesterol and unbelievable processing machinery. Literal molecule machinery. I'm not exaggerating and I'm not being poetic. Little machines live on that membrane. Microscopic machines. Oh, it, it, that's amazing. I mean, how can, you, how can you outdo that? Well, guess what? There's another layer on top of that layer. And this is, this is a layer of sugars that if you could look down, if you could make yourself really tiny and, and, get, uh, and somehow sit on this layer of sugars, it would look like you're in a forest of sugars. If you, if you zoom out, it's, an ante it's a bunch of antennas, feelers on top of the cell, on top of the membrane. And it's made up of sugars. Not, when, I, is, when we say sugars, you've got to think chemistry. Not, most of us, we think sugars. We think, you know, sweet. We think uh, glucose. Actually, we think table sugar, which is uh, glucose and fructose. That's what most of us think of when we think of sugar. But sugar is a chemical word, like alcohol is a chemical word. You know, it, it, to a chemist, alcohol means something completely different than to an average person. Lay person, lay person hears alcohol. They hear, you know, Jack Daniels or beer. When you hear sugar, we think what you put in your tea. But sugar is a chemistry word. It's a chemical structure, specific basic chemical structure. Remember, everything in, everything in chemistry, everything in biology is just tinker toys. And sugar is a specific type of tinker toy shape. And this forest of sugars, far, uh, trees or antennas, whatever metaphor you want to use, that sits on top of the cell membrane is called the glycocalyx. That means sugar coat or sugar mask. Actually, it technically means, uh, it means sweet husk in Greek. It's, uh, the glycocalyx has only really been known about for a very short time, relatively speaking, maybe 30 years or so. I don't think, I heard a little bit about the glycocalyx, but I didn't quite grasp it in pharmacy school, towards the end of pharmacy. Actually, you know what, I don't even think we talked about it. We talked about the, the sugars, but we didn't really talk about the glycocalyx. I don't even think they knew about it when I was in pharmacy school. That's 30 years is not a long time. But the impact of the glycocalyx on health is humongous. There isn't a single health issue that doesn't involve it maybe even is caused by disturbances at this level. And I'm not saying that we got to get all sciencey here, but if you have an autoimmune disease, you want to know about the glycocalyx and you want to know how to fix it. Autoimmunity is a glycocalyx problem. Cancer is probably a glycocalyx problem. Wounding of any kind, chronic inflammation, I should say, is a glycocalyx problem. And the science of all of this stuff is called glycobiology. The glycocalyx, by the way, is very important for wound healing. It's how, our bodies, it's how our bodies turn on the wound healing process. The glycocalyx triggers, broken glycocalyx, triggers wound heal, uh, he, the, the wound healing machinery. And this plays a really important role in the health of the body, especially in skin health. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844 is our number. We'll return on the bright side right after this. We 
are back on the bright side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. 844-236-6010 is our number. 844-236-6010. If you have questions about the longevity products, longevity business, health challenges you or a loved one may be dealing, dealing with, we can help you. 844-236-6010. If you have questions about the longevity products or business, we can help you. And of course, if you have a success story you'd like to share, We love hearing success stories, and I know they're out there because I get the letters. 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. We are talking about the glycocalyx. Most folks haven't heard of this unless you've been listening to this program. We've been talking about it for a while. You know, if you have rosacea, that could be a glycocalyx issue. Rosacea is a blood vessel problem. People think rosacea is a skin problem. It's not a skin problem. It's a blood vessel problem. Blood vessels open and close accordingly, depending on what's inside them. And if you have an issue with, a, with something that's affecting the red blood cells, the glycocalyx of the red blood cells, or of the blood vessels somehow, that can cause the vascular issues associated with skin problems like rosacea. In fact, this relationship between the vascular system, the blood vessel system, and, uh, and uh, uh, the glycocalyx is incredibly important. Cholest- uh, heart disease, it's not a cholesterol problem, it's a glycocalyx problem. I'm, not, I'm sorry, not cholesterol. Heart disease is not a cholesterol problem, it's a glycocalyx problem. When the glycocalyx inside the blood vessels gets damaged, cholesterol comes to the rescue. Damaging of the glycocalyx of the uh, blood vessel cells is the cause of heart disease. And if you really want to take care of your blood vessels, start using, eating fruits and veggies and using vitamin C, things that help support and protect the glycocalyx. This is one of the reasons why uh, the Fucoidin Z, Fucoid is so helpful. Fucoidin protects the glycocalyx. Mucousy material protects the glycocalyx. Mucus is actually one of the ways the body protects the glycocalyx. Mucus is, causes the enemy to slime away. Mucus acts like a decoy for molecules that can disturb the glycocalyx. Whether that mucus is the mucus we make, and that's why you make mucus in response to uh, eating the wrong foods, or the mucus you put in your mouth from foods, such as the mucus you get from eggs, or the mucus you get from uh, uh, seaweed, the mucus you get from fucoidin Z. Mucousy, slimy material protects the glycocalyx. That's why mucousy material can be so helpful. That's why the fucoid Z has so many benefits, especially for the blood. So the glycocalyx plays a role in skin of health. It plays a role in uh, heart, uh, heart disease. One of the most interesting aspects of the glycocalyx is plant defensive molecules, which we talk about all the time on this program. Plants make defensive molecules. Now there's now you're hearing about it. You know, a lot of times you'll hear stuff on this radio program, and then a year or two or three or five, you'll hear it in the mainstream. So you're starting to hear now about plant defensive molecules, which we've been talking about for years. Plants defensive molecules are molecules that the plant has evolved to manufacture to protect itself from predators, that is us. Animals that will eat the plants. Remember, in nature, it's a dog-eat-dog world out there. Everything's eating everything else. So in order for survival to occur, plants and, and, and living things have to make defensive molecules. So plants make defensive molecules. These are special proteins whose job it is to, to interfere with the glycocalyx. Yes, that's what these plant molecules do that we talk about all the time. They interfere with the glycocalyx. So if you have a gluten intolerance, you got a glycocalyx problem. If you have a, a autoimmune disease that's related to plants, you've got a glycocalyx problem. The immune system has evolved to eliminate, to attack anything with an unrecognized glycocalyx. The glycocalyx, as we said before, is like an ID badge. Hello, my name is Ben's liver cell. Right on my liver cells. That's what the glycocalyx says. The glycocalyx is an identification badge so that the immune system can, can see who... And the immune system is constantly scouting around for the enemy. And the glycocalyx is like an ID badge that allows it to, to uh, not be, suffer the wrath of the immune system. When the glycocalyx is disturbed, it's like the name tag is disturbed. It makes it susceptible to attack. We call that autoimmunity. That's what autoimmunity is. 
And because the primary way the glycocalyx gets attacked is from something that's gotten into the blood, the first thing you do when you have an autoimmune disease, if you're interested in taking care of it, is look for foods, especially these plant defense molecules. They're called, by the way, lectins, L-E-C-T-I-N-S. I know a lot of you have heard of lectins because they've been in the news, at least in the health news. It wasn't that long ago that nobody knew what lectins were. Lectins uh, are these plant defensive molecules that disturb the glycocalyx. They can initiate immune reactions. They can initiate immune reactions against self because the glycocalyx becomes unrecognized. That's called autoimmunity. And gluten is the classic example of them, but there's lots of them. And if you're just going gluten-free, you may still be getting lectins. This is why I just, the whole gluten-free thing you know, so sometimes, sometimes in the world of nutrition, in the world of health, things go from being completely unknown. It's like a pendulum effect. They go from being completely unknown to everybody talks about them in a silly kind of way. Everybody talks about gluten in a kind of silly kind of way. Now everything's about gluten. Gluten this, gluten that, gluten intolerance, gluten free. Every restaurant's got gluten free, but it doesn't matter because there's a million other lectins you can have problems with. That's why people say, well, I, got my, I still have my rheumatoid arthritis, but I'm gluten-free. It doesn't matter if you're just gluten-free. You've got to go by what you're reacting to. Gluten is a big problem, certainly. It's a huge problem. And almost always going to be involved in autoimmunity. But you can't just go gluten-free and expect to be out of the woods because there's lots of lectins. The eat right for your blood type. You've probably heard of that. The eat right for your blood type uh, diet. That's a lectin diet. That's a diet that's based on lectin chemistry, I should say. It's not it's an anti-lectin diet. Guy Peter Adamo, Dr. Peter Adamo, I'm not sure what kind of doctor he is, he came up with the idea that there were, uh, uh, that there were specific foods that would disrupt the glycocalyx of red blood cells and make them glob up. They, the fancy schmancy biochemical name for these specific food, actually the, the, the Stuff on this in the specific foods, the lectins in the specific foods were called agglutinins because they caused red blood cells to glute, to, gl to glob up. To glute means to glob up in, in biochemistry. And agglutinin is something that causes them to glob up. And he noticed that certain foods would make certain blood cells glob up in certain blood types. Turns out, of course, these little agglutinins are all lectins. And he noticed, and, and lectins, that's a classic reaction, by the way, of lectins. Lectins makes things glob up, stick up stick together. The glycocalyx has a way of kind of separating things. When the glycocalyx is disturbed, everything globs up. So globbing up is a classic lectin response, and Dr. Denama knew, knew that. And he came up with this theory that there were specific blood types that could only eat specific foods. Specific blood types would react, or would, their blood would glob up to the, in response to these specific foods. And he, he came up with type A being only, he called them the vegetarian, type B, uh, I'm not sure, type B is like a balanced diet, and then uh, type AB, a mixed diet, high type O protein diet. These are somewhat arbitrary distinctions, and I'm not sure I 100% buy into these, eat right for your type diet, the way he divided everything up, but the concept is, is true. There are, it's, we should all be eating right for our type. There should be four, uh, 8 billion eat right for your type diets for the 8 billion human beings on the planet. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. Got lines open. We'll be back after this. Okay, we're back on the bright side. I am Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number, and we do have lines open for you, 844-236-6010. We'll get your calls here momentarily from the New York Times. High blood sugar levels tied to memory decline. Researchers assessed cognitive function in 5,189 people average age 66, tested their blood sugar uh, with uh, using the hemoglobin A1C test, test that accurately measures blood sugar. There was no, uh, no association between blood sugar levels and cognition at the start of the study, but consistently over time, Scores on the tests of memory and executive function declined as hemoglobin A1C increased even if you didn't have diabetes. How do you like that? I'm telling you, if you uh, have any kind of health challenge, uh, mental health challenges, that is uh, dementia or, or uh, deterioration of mental or cognitive functioning, and you want to do one thing, 
focus on stabilizing or lowering your blood sugar. Use more protein, use coconut oil, use the ketogenic diet. There's a reason why the ketogenic diet, I'm sorry, there's a reason why coconut oil has been so, uh, ha has been so popularized for uh, Alzheimer's disease. There's a book called The Coconut Oil Diet, The Coconut Oil Miracle, coconut oil being supposedly some kind of miraculous panacea for all kinds of health challenges. Why? Because coconut oil is ketogenic. Yes. Another reason why I like coconut oil. Aside from it being really tasty, really stable, good source of uh, saturated fat, it's awesome for the ketogenic diet. It is ketogenic. And ketogenesis, generating ketones, is one of the brain's best anti-dementia strategies. That's why the fasting diet, that's why fasting or calorie restriction is great for folks who are dealing with dementia or Alzheimer's. If I had an Alzheimer's disease clinic, where I, or a nursing home or facility where I had a lot of Alzheimer's disease patients, I would be serving, the, I'd be really careful with the kind of food I was serving them. It would be ketogenic and it would be high concentrations of electrolytes in easy to process, easy to digest and easy to process forms like soups and vegetable juices and you're beyond tangy tangerine. If you have some friend or a, a family member in a nursing home who's dealing with dementia or Alzheimer's disease, get them some beyond tangy tangerine. Watch what happens. Use chicken soup, homemade chicken soup. Watch what happens. Get them off the, the, the pies and the sugar. And a lot of folks who have dementia love sugar because they're constantly low blood sugar. Remember the high blood sugar, low blood sugar roller coaster. So get them off the sugar. Get them on the ketogenic diet. Watch what happens. It doesn't take very long. The brain is very, brain responds to nutrition really quickly. You will notice significant changes in dementia patients, unless they're really, really way, way, way far gone. You'll notice significant changes pretty quickly with a typical dementia patient once you start uh, using some of these digestive strategies that we talk about it on the program, all, this program all the time, including lowering blood sugar. All right, let me get one more here and then we'll get your calls, 844-236-6010. This, uh, this is from ba, 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 the Journal of Cardiac Failure. That's a terrible name, Journal of Cardiac Failure. Uh, beetroot, beetroot juice supplements may help certain heart failure patients. Beetroot juice supplements may enhance the exercise capacity in patients with heart failure, according to a new study. Exercise, capa uh, exercise capacity was measured. That's uh, how much exercise they can tolerate, people can tolerate. And it turns out that uh, beetroot juice helps enhance exercise capacity. Beets in general. Beets are nature's best source, or one of nature's best source, sources of something called nitrates. And nitrites, which are really important for the heart, nitric oxide specifically, really important for the heart. And you don't need beetroot, beetroot juice supplements. You can just do, do beets. We have a beetroot juice supplement, by the way, uh, Cardio Beets, Longevity does. But eat your beets. I, it blows me away how many people don't like beets. They're like sugar. They're like candy. They're nature's candy, beets. And they're purple. They're gorgeous, and they're beautiful. You can make fermented beets, too. Fermented beets are... Fermented beet soup, borscht, wonderful, awesome heart-friendly food. One of the best heart-friendly foods, now that I think about it, you get probiotics, you get the good bacteria, which are really important for the heart. Another one of those hidden connections of diet and, um, in the world of diet and health is, uh, is the relationship between probiotics, the good bacteria, and heart disease and heart health, the relationship between bile and heart health. Beetroot juice is uh, also a great source of potassium, which is important for the heart. B vitamins, and it's awesome, awesome skin and eye medicine. Beets are purple. That purple is awesome for the skin, and it's awesome for the eyes. All pigments are for the skin and for the eyes. 844-236-6010 is our number. Let's go to Chris in Texas. Good morning, Chris. How you doing? Uh, well... Dr. Ben, it's a miracle that I'm still alive because the more that I listen to your program, the more I listen to Dr. Wallach and all the things that uh, I should have done that I didn't do, and I'm 48 years old now, and yet here I am, and you uh, made a good point the other day when you talked about how forgiving our bodies are, Yeah, and uh, I, I, I think you really nailed it. That day the, because, isn't that amazing? I mean, that's, that's the truth, Dr. Ben, because I think the reason why people are so exploitable by the medical community is because, uh, A, we do live in spite of all the things that we do wrong, yeah. and B, 
We're, we're so innately stubborn. We resist <laughs> change. We don't want to change. We That's really true. don't. You know, it's even deeper than that. It's an awesome point, Chris. It's, but it's even deeper than that. You know how there's all these fears, phobias and fears. You've got fear of heights and fear of speak, public speaking and fear of death and fear of uh, spiders. And there's all these different fears. There's only one real fear, though, that under, underlies all those fears. And that is, as you aptly said, and as you, nail, you just totally nailed it there, it's the fear of change. That's the number one fear we have. It's not that we don't want to change. It's that we're scared of change. Think about all the fears so, you Dr. have. Ben, I, 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 I just want to say that uh, I appreciate the time that you allow me to talk to you. And the reason is because there's nobody in my life right now where I live where I can talk about the things that you talk about on your program because they really don't get it. They where are you? They don't get it. And where do you stubborn. live? Oh, well, I'm, well, I'm here where uh, I, I met you in person before. You came to Austin. Uh, okay. And brave new book. So I so okay. I've met you before in person. Are you you the Chris that I, the chemist Chris? That I that I talked to sometimes. No, I'm no. Uh, uh, I'm I'm just the guy that came to see you at at Brave New Books back when the store was still open. Okay, what what's going on with Brave New Books? Uh, Are they still around? Know. Are they still around? I, I I'm not sure. Okay, I got you. But, but, so, but, but, listen, right. but listen, if 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 you ever if you ever decide to do anything in Austin as far as brick and mortar, I yeah. want you to zero in, focus on I thirty five, the interstate, because people say that Austin is too expensive, and you know, it, um, it's, the the, ru you're, the you're rush hour, the highways. Oh my God, that place is awful to drive in. It's worse in Denver, it, which is pretty bad. It, 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 it's, Exactly. That's that's why I, I think that like if you're if anybody were going to open up a brick and mortar retail, yeah, uh, and not do it on I-35, they would just be throwing their money down the drain. But if you look at I-35, if you look at the interstate, it really is very affordable compared why, to anywhere else. Why can't else you? I, I want to know why you can't tell people about all this stuff in Austin. You live if you live in Austin, you should be able to talk about this kind of stuff. Hey, we got to take a break, Chris. You want to hang on? We'll finish up when we come back. And then uh, we'll okay. take your calls as well. If you're on hold, we'll uh, we'll get you those. We'll get you too. And we do have lines open. Eight four four two three six sixty ten is our number. You're listening to the Bright Side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We will be right back. back on the bright side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We're talking to 844-236-6010 is our number. We're talking to Chris in Texas. Chris, you there? You live, you live in Austin, Chris? Yes. And uh, my mom was a victim of the medical community here in Austin back in 1993. I hope that things have improved in this market since 1993, but literally, I'm, I feel like I'm in the belly of the beast. You are in the belly of the beast. Not not quite Austin, but Texas is the is the belly of the beast. Absolutely, Texas is deep into it, really deep well, into yeah, all but, that but, stuff. But it, but at least, but but at least in in terms of uh, the medical model, it's it's uh, like entrenched. The medical model is entrenched in Texas, in Houston, and in, not so much in Austin, but in Houston, in Dallas. It's just deep. It, Texas is like. You hit the nail on the head there, D uh, belly of the beast. You ever hear this thing called the Cassandra complex? You know what Cassandra was? Cassandra the Greek? She was a Greek uh, no. goddess, I think, and she was condemned. She was punished to know the truth, but not had, but nobody would believe her. She she could pr know the future. She could prophesy the future, but nobody would believe her. And and that that I sometimes think of that story when I think of what you're telling me. How you know certain things, but nobody's going to listen. Nobody's going to believe you, especially where you're at. And I know that's how it, I, I, I know what you, I know what you're talking about. Let me just say this real quick. You got to let everybody be. You know, if people aren't ready to hear a message, then you let them be. I don't I don't ever proselytize. I don't ever try to preach or to anybody who doesn't want to be preached to or or correct anybody. You know, everybody's got you got to let everybody be sick if they want to be sick. You got even if you know that there's what they're doing is wrong, whether it's not it's not up to somebody to interfere with another person's life if they if they're not asking for advice. Only give advice to people who want advice. But what we, go ahead, Chris. I got I want to take some more calls, but I'll let you finish up here. Before you run, let me ask you something real quick. Something I heard sure. about in the news that yeah. uh, the, the pharmaceutical company, uh, whichever one, has come out with some new drug saying that uh, it can remove the cloaking 
that cancer uses in order to hide so that the immune system can't find it. You know I what can, I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah, I did read something. I vaguely remember reading something like that. That they're, In my opinion, all of these strategies, are they're missing the point of cancer. They're missing the point of disease, which is that something's wrong in the body. To try to, to, to address the enemy by killing it or by, by rendering it somehow less effective or by suppressing the immune system misses the point of the disease. Your body's messed up. You're doing the wrong thing. Uh, cancer is a, and all health challenges are the body talking to us to try to remove you have a good the point because, because it seems like a lot of the conventional medical strategies used for cancer actually suppress the immune system instead of boost it. Right. Right. So that, that, that's one of the strategies. What you're talking about now is a strategy to defeat cancer's mechanisms, to somehow m- render cancer impotent. And, and if you have cancer, you know, I can understand you would, because it's such a, a dramatic switch from, the reason why cancer is such a problem and distinct among all other diseases is because the body switches, the genetics switch into an, a, an ancient way of operating that is not in the bo- organism's interest. It's in the cell's interest to divide that rapidly, but it's not in the organism's interest. See, to have a body, you've got to have a cooperative effort between 100 trillion, trillion cells. This is, this takes a lot of, for, for that to happen, a, a lot has to go right. Right. With, it requires energy, it requires nutrients, it requires a clean place to do its work. When a cell can't, uh, doesn't have everything it needs to do its business, it becomes sociopathic. It's, it starts to not care about its neighbors. That's what cancer is. Cancer is when the cells aren't acting like a body anymore. They're not acting like a macro-organism, us, anymore. They're acting independently. All of a sudden, they switch into a bacterial way of being. The difference between a bacterial cell, one of the differences between a bacterial cell and a human cell is bacterial cells don't form organs. They don't form bodies. At best, they form films, but they don't really form individual body, bodies with individual structures as distinct as ours. So what happens in cancer is the cell stops being a human cell that's cooperative and becomes a bacterial cell that only cares about itself. And in order to, 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 to address that, you've got to make the cell feel safe enough to think it can cooperate so that it can be part of your eye or your bone or your nerves or your skin or something else. If it doesn't think, it's, if it, doesn't think it has enough resources to be part of all these organs, it's not going to give up its independence. It's going to say, screw you. And that's what a cancer cell is. Cancer cell is like, I, I, you, you haven't taken care of me. I'm just doing my own thing now. So what we got to do is we got to so help you, the so cell refer, feel safe. You, Go ahead. You refer, to, you refer to a cancer cell as a bacterial cell. It's not so a bacterial cell. Thing. Can't. It's not a bacterial cell. It's acting like a bacterial cell. It's still, a, you know, okay, still okay, your but, cell. But, 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 the question, but the question is, is what makes these cancer cells so incredibly autonomous and resilient compared to the other cells? I'll tell you why. That's a great question. Because cells have that in their genetics to be independent. There's things in life called single-cell organisms. That is, cells that are complete animals or things, not animals, but things. Bacterial, bacteria are single cell organisms in our genes. It's ancient, very, very ancient, but it's in our genes to become in, for cells to become independent. It's gen, there's a genetic program for that that switches on when the cell is under duress, massive duress. All right, I, got to, I want to get a couple wow. more calls, and that's a great conversation, though. Thank you so much, Chris. Appreciate it. Have a, have a, and thanks for the kind words. Appreciate that, too. All right, let's go to Chris in North Dakota. Good morning, Chris. Welcome to the Bright Side. Hello, Pharmacist Ben. Hey, I'm Hello. calling on a urinary tract infection. I think I have. Okay. And I've been dealing with it for about a week. Okay. Um, that's a, that's I, miserable. I have not done any antibiotics or anything, but I guess my main question is, what the heck causes these things? That, you know, if you listen tomorrow, we're going to talk about that, actually. It's lectins, Great. and it's the whole lectin thing. And the way you uh, get rid of all lectins is you slime them away. And so the, the treatment for UTIs, as everybody knows, is what's the most important treatment, you know, or the most famous treatment? What's it, what is it? Do you know? Cranberry juice. There you go. Cranberry juice. Exactly. Cranberry juice contains sugars that slime those lectins away. So remember, slime is the, is, the, is the remedy for lectins, mucus. Uh, the body will make its own mucus, but if you want to add slimy material, use mannose, M-A-N-N-O-S-E. That's a slimy material. Use the fucoid Z, algaes. But most importantly, uh, UTIs are, an, are, are dysbio- uh, imbalance in your good bacteria. Dysbiosis, it's called. Messed up good bacteria. I would be focusing on, on your gut, where the good bacteria are, although you may want to do some, you know, because it's such a miserable experience, uh, you may want to use some of these remedies like Lugol solution, which kills the bacteria, or 
as I say, a mannos or cranberry juice or a, a what else, colloidal silver maybe. Uh, also, some people get, use sodium bicarbonate, which, which creates a, a less acid environment that the bacteria cannot thrive in. Uh, but listen tomorrow, you may find it interesting. We're going to talk about lectins and UTIs. All right, I got to go, Chris. Uh, hey, thanks. thanks for your call. Appreciate it. I want to let Carl, the Truth Raider, get in and give us the last word, Carl, but it's got to be good. What's going on, Carl? Teacher Ben. <laughs> okay. I can't hear you, man. Teacher Ben, can you hear Are me you? now? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Echo there. Three things. Yes. Quick, very quick. Three things. Flora, flora, phenorum. Number two. The new commercial language out there, the strategic language, have a better and healthier looking you. It's the new skin industry, healthcare and skin industries codes. Brave new books is relocating. They're not okay. closed, they're just okay. relocating. Where so where are they? Going? Where are they going? Yeah. We got that an awful echo, Carl. Do you have the radio on? No, I'm using my computer phone because I'm all out of minutes on my cell okay. phone. All right, so where's Brave New Books, first of all? Or do you know? Well, Brave New Books used to be on the corner of uh, Waterloo Street and Martin Luther King Boulevard. Right, and where are they now? They are relocating, and I don't think they have decided where they're going to have the relocation built. But that's up to uh, the new uh, the owners. I'm not sure if it's Harlan Dietrich is still the owner or not. Okay, but, uh, I knew there was some weird stuff going on over there. I didn't know. Hey, I can't deal with this echo, Carl. I'm going to have to let you go, man. Did you have one more thing to say? Those three things, chloroforphanorum, that's a, a steroid for fruits and vegetables. Beware of that from the evil grocery store, the corporate grocery store. I hadn't heard Beware of that. I didn't heard of that. that. Right, that's awful. i got to let you go. I wish you, you had, that's, that's, good, that's a, good, uh, a, good, uh, a good subject. I hadn't heard of that, but I do know that they spray lots of nasty stuff on the produce. That's why I've always said that uh, even if you're eating veggies, even if you're eating just produce, even if you're eating just salads, you're, we're still not eating the way human beings evolved to eat, even if it's just salads. Simply, if you just factor in the, the, the pesticides that they put on the, on the plants and the pesticides uh, and the fertilizers and the toxic uh, elements in the, in the soil that kill the bacteria, there's no minerals. So the foods we eat today, just it's, no matter what you're eating, we're not eating the way we need to. And that's why supplementing is so important, people. Getting on a good nutritional supplement program. Get on the Healthy Start Pack. <clears throat> At the very least, get on the Beyond Tangy Tangerine and watch what happens. Go to brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. If you've never supplemented before, get on the Beyond Tangy Tangerine. Just watch what happens. All right. That's it for now. Thanks for listening to the Bright Side Friends. Don't forget to check out my Truth Skin Health products at truthtreatments.com or Truth Transdermal C Serum, Truth Transdermal C Balm, Truth Omega 6 Healing Cream, Truth Retinol 5% Gel, and now our new Truth Biomimetic Priming Mist for $39. Get a month's supply of plant derived minerals. And that's all. Have yourselves a wonderful, beautiful, awesome, spectacular day. We'll talk to you all later. Bye for now. 